Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to discuss about middleware in ASP.NET Core. Middleware in ASP.NET Core is nothing but components that are assembled into the HTTP pipeline to handle requests and response. Now, a middleware component can either choose to pass the request to the next component in the pipeline or it may choose to end the request. It depends on the requirement of the middleware. Now, a middleware can perform the task both before as well as after calling the next component. The way it works is if you look into the diagram, when a request comes into the HTTP pipeline, it goes into the middleware, the middleware executes before sending it to the next middleware, then it sends the request to the next middleware, and this way the request travels through multiple middlewares, and then finally the last middleware sends the response back, and all that middleware can either choose to handle the response, do something with it, or just let it go. That is how this works. Now the middleware in ASP.NET core are very similar to the way I HTTP handler and I HTTP module worked in the legacy ASP.NET application. Now the only difference is I HTTP handler was the last endpoint at the HTTP pipeline whereas I HTTP module were more like filter through the pipeline. The middleware in ASP.NET core works as both. It can either work as like I HTTP module meaning the request can go and come back and it doesn't end the request meaning it is not acting as the last endpoint of the middleware chain or it might choose to decide the endpoint of a middleware chain. Now I'm going to show how this works. Now the middleware functionality are achieved using two ways. One is there are out of box extension methods on I application builder which can be used for creating middleware and those methods are there are mainly three kinds of method. One is a run, the second one is use and the third one is map and I'm going to go through all of them one by one and the other way is to write own custom middleware and I'm going to show that as well. So to do that let's start with a ASP.NET Core application. Now I'm going to create a new ASP.NET Core web application and I'm going to name it as middleware.demo and I'm going to go ahead keep ASP.NET Core 3.1 and I'm just going to create an empty project. Now once the project is created I'm going to keep the main method as is because we are not doing anything here. Now in the startup what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all this code because I'm not using any routing nothing. We're going to start with base middleware. So let's say we also don't need the I web host environment so I'm just going to get rid of it. So first thing we can do is we can do app.run and if you look into the definition of run, it says it adds a terminal middleware delegate to an application requests pipeline, meaning nothing will go beyond this point. Once this middleware is hit, anything below this middleware will never be executed. And I'm going to show it. And here we can do context.response.writeAsync. And in the right, we can say response from fast middleware. And then we can write another app.run. And I'll just copy paste the same thing. And here we can say second middleware. Let's just give a break. Okay, now let me change it to run as a console. So now let's run this application. Now when we run this application, you can see that the response comes only from the first one. Because as I explained before, it's a terminal middleware, meaning after a run is executed, nothing else below that will ever be executed. So now that brings us to the next extension method for middleware, which is use. Now when we use the method use, it takes, as you can see, it has a HTTP context and it takes a func which is the delegate to the next middleware. So here in this case, if we don't use the next, then it will behave exactly like run. So let me show what I mean by that. If I run it now, it'll just execute the first one because we are not executing next, so the next middleware will never be executed. So it will act as a terminal middleware. See, only the first one is printed. But if we just do await next, now what will happen is after it executes the first one, it will execute the next one also. And as you can see, it executed the first one and then the second one. So let me do one thing. Let me just give here HTML 
body and let's close the HTML here. Okay, now if I run, they should be in two different lines. Yeah. So the first one and second one. The next thing I wanted to show, as I mentioned earlier, that a middleware can have logic before as well as after calling the next middleware. So to demonstrate that, what I can do is I can add a wait here. And let me just copy paste this line. And here, what I can do is I can leave this as is. And this, the after code can act as a and for the first middleware as well as the closing for HTML and the body. So now if I run this, I forgot to give a break, but you can see response for first middleware, response from second middleware, and then end of first middleware. So they're getting printed as expected. Now that we have seen the run and use, let's go to the next one. And to show the next one, I'm going to show you the other variation of use, which is use when. So if I do a app dot use when, you can see in the description itself, it conditionally creates a branch in the request pipeline that rejoins to the main pipeline. Now this is very important, the point of rejoin the main pipeline. What it is essentially saying that when we have a condition, it will create a branch for the request and whatever we have in the branch will be executed, but then it will come back and join the, the main branch of the HTTP request pipeline. So now if we do a use when, and we created a branch here, and as you can see, it's a func which takes a context and return a bool. So we can have something like context, and we can say if context dot request dot query string contains a key let's say the key is role so we are saying if the query string contains role then create a new branch okay and this new branch we are basically getting a handle to the same i application builder so we can take that and it's an action and once we get the i application builder we can do anything that we want. We can use a use or a run. So let's use a run because we want to terminate this branch. So we can say async context. And here we can have, we can just copy paste one of this line. And here we can say role is Let's break this one also. So you can say role is context dot request dot query role. And that's about it. So now if I run and if I add a query string here, role equal to admin. Now you can see it did the fast middleware, then it did the role as admin. And because this is a terminal middleware, then it is just going to go back to the fast middleware and print the end, which is an expected behavior. So that's with use when. The next one I wanted to show is map. So for map, as the name suggests, it basically maps to a path. So you can see it creates a branch for the request pipeline, which matches the path. So now we can have, let's say, it maps to map and then again just like before with use when it gets a i application builder and then after that basically we create a branch and we can do whatever we want so let's do this let's create a a dot run and here we can just say instead of these we can say new branch map now if we run this and if we say slash map you can see that it is going to the new branch. Okay. The other thing we can do basically, and this is where it gets interesting and powerful, is that now we can have multiple branches, which means that inside of the map itself, we can map other endpoints, and those endpoints are going to be the sub-level branches. Here we can say a dot map. So we are essentially creating another branch inside of the slash map. So here we can say branch and we already used app as well as a so here let's use x and then we can say x dot run and instead of run we can say again request on handler so we can say async context plus two and we can just copy paste this line and we can say new branch this is the child 
So we can say new child branch and close it. So if I do that, now I created essentially another branch inside of map. So I can either go to map or we can go to map slash branch. So if I go to just map, it will show that we are in new branch map. And if I go to map slash branch, it will show that we are going inside of new child. And as you can see, since I use the run, which is a terminal middleware after the child branch, it's not going to print back the parent branch. So that's with the map. And similar to map, we can have map when. Map when and use when are very similar. Both are used with a conditional operator. The only difference is use when can join back the main branch, whereas map when will never join back the main branch. So it's very similar as you can see it takes the same exact same syntax so we can I'm just going to copy paste this whole thing and I'm just going to change the name of the query string from role to something else count and count is count so if I have to show that I can just go here now if I do a now you can see count5 is printed. So it is very similar to how the use when works. Now it's time to show how to build a custom middleware. But before I do that, what we can do is we can just create an extension method on the I application builder itself and move all this code there. So for that, I'm going to create a new class and I can say app App middleware extensions and inside of that I can first create my extension method I can say public static let's make this class also static void add just for the proper naming convention I'm just going to say use extensions this I application builder app and then what I can do is I can just copy paste all this code here. That's all. And then next we add the namespace. Get rid of the unwanted namespaces. Okay. And then here what I can do is I can just do app dot use extensions. And now if I run this application, I'm going to see the same behavior as before. I just moved the code into an extension method. That's all I did. This is just to show that how you can just clean up the code a little bit. Now let's get into building a custom middleware. Now for building custom middleware, the way it works is there are two parts of the equation. One part is we create a class with a convention, meaning the convention is it has to have a public async invoke method, which takes an HTTP context as an input. And in the con constructor it takes a request delegate next as a constructor parameter the request delegate is nothing but the handle to the next middleware in the pipeline and then in the startup we can use the use middleware extension method it's a generic extension method and we can pass the new type to the generic extension method so let me show it so let's create a new class called custom middleware so i'm going to go ahead and add a new class and i'm going to name it as custom middleware in the class as I mentioned it will have a constructor which will take the request delegate next as the next endpoint and I can just create it as a local variable to the class and the next thing is I'm going to have a public async task invoke as I mentioned earlier, it's a conventional based programming. So it's going to take HTTP context. And then here, now that we have HTTP context, we can do whatever we want with the context. So just for simplicity, we can have await HTTP context dot response dot write async. And we can write something here. So we can say inside and let me get rid of this so we can say inside the new custom middleware and then we're going to call the next middleware in the pipeline i have to pass the http context to the next now this is done let me get rid of the unwanted namespaces now what we have to do is we have to go into startup and here instead of using extensions we can call the use 
middleware method and as you can see it adds a middleware type to the applications request pipeline so we have to pass the type and our type is custom middleware and since i am calling the next middleware in the pipeline what i can do is i can do app dot run and here i can say async context context dot response dot write async and i can just say and so now if i go ahead and run this application i can see that inside the new custom middleware and since i am calling the next delegate it is going to say end which is the last statement that i have the other advantage of type based middleware is if we have other items injected inside it it will automatically pick up just to show that what i can do is i can create a i my type my type and i can generate the i my type and let me initialize and i my type is an interface and let's say it has public void print so and i can declare a my type which implements i my type so it's just console dot write line let me change it i don't like i my type we just name it as i printer and let's rename this as printer so it has print and here just printing so now here we have i printer and we can change this printer let's change this also and here we can just say just say printer dot print and then what we can do is we can go back to startup and here we can say services dot add singleton and we can say i printer printer that's all and now if i run this application what is going to happen is the new class that i created it will get a handle of and see it is printing now it is printing twice because it's a print statement so it will execute both the time while coming in as well as going out that's about it so that's the main advantage of using a custom middleware as a class is that if we have lot of logic we obviously don't want to put all the logic inside of this class so we can have multiple interfaces and we can inject them and then we can use it inside of the invoke method to do some custom logic so i guess that's all i wanted to cover today i am hoping that it covers most of the fundamentals of middleware if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are not subscribed to my channel and you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thank you very much for watching this video